Have you ever wondered what it would be like to have a driving range at your house? Well, we went over to Moonihi's pad to find out. This LPJ player has one in her backyard. Yes, you heard that right, folks. The backyard. You can buy like 6,000 balls. Really? For a couple hundred dollars, yeah. I've never online. been in the market for 6,000 balls, but <laughs> those are nice balls. Yeah. So do you, do you play like a typical game out here when you have someone, when you have a guest who has a YouTube um, channel? Not too, no. <laughs> no, you're the first one I would have is to it really? say. Yeah, is it really? Okay? but all right. Um, not really. We, um, yeah, we don't really, we do practice sessions out here with my coach. Okay, yeah. and so what do you do with that? My coach stands out on the green with a baseball glove, and Whoa. I just hit him. He tells me the number, I hit him, and he catches it without moving his feet. And he walks, yeah. oh wow. Yeah. What, what, what do you call this that you have here? This, this homemade, this home? I don't know, a little backyard practice facility. <laughs> little backyard practice facility. <laughs> it's pretty... Pretty, yeah, it's pretty cool. It's pretty incredible. I should practice here more than, you know, I do. So what we have here is it's a it's a how long is the hole? Uh, it's not a hole, but I would say to the green from the tee to the green, it's about like sixty yards. Okay. And we have a range facing the other way that you can head out just towards bushes or as far <laughs> as you want. Yeah. The wild west. Yeah, yeah. It gets really windy up here. Yeah. Like crazy windy. Does that ever help with your game? Um, I personally don't like to practice in the wind all the time. But yeah, I guess yes in some, like, you know, a small percentage. But I've been getting better at playing in the wind and yeah. practicing in the wind. So it's been good. The logo of the ball here that she plays is a pepper. Is it what? What's the what's the uh, story there? Um, so I was born in Chengdu, China, and Chengdu is known for a really spicy food and spicy girls, but spicy food mostly. Um, yeah, and my dad, you know, when I mentioned he started a restaurant chain in China, it was Sichuan food, so it's super spicy. It's just something that I've grown up around. I love spicy food, and I was like, why not? That's fun. You know, it's cute. So your dad gets you into golf, mm -hmm. and what is that like? Now you've had probably, I would imagine, made his dreams come true. I would say he's pretty proud. Yeah, I mean, he's always been proud, but um, it's, I don't know. I don't think he ever thought it would turn into what it has today. Um, he just thought, hey, you know, it's something good for my daughter to do. It builds her character. It teaches her discipline and a lot of things like that. But yeah, to be a professional golfer, it's a lot of commitment. A lot of, you know, you have you have to give up a lot of things in life. And I don't think you ever thought about me actually pulling through. <laughs> but yeah, Why? I'm really happy. Why do you think? Um, it's a lot of sacrifices as a kid. You know, you sacrifice going to see friends. You sacrifice a lot of things for practice, for tournaments. I never got to experience prom, you know, no school dances. Um, it was hard for me to hang out with friends a lot of the times. Just things like that, that, you know, kids would typically experience. A lot of things I missed out on, but I don't regret it at all. I've been calling you Mooney, but you prefer Lily. Uh, with friends, yes, but okay. I like Mooney too. Right. It's not that I don't like it. It's just, it feels more familiar to me, Lily. Sure. Yeah. Where did Lily come from? Um. She's given that name in like kindergarten. Yeah, quite young. So that's why it feels familiar to me. Right. Because growing up, everyone called me Lily. Nobody even knew that my name was Mooney. And then when it came to putting my name up for golf, my mom was like, do you want Lily or Mooney? I was like, we can put Mooney. It's like, what's on my passport? It just makes it easier. And plus Mooney's pretty easy to pronounce. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah. That's good. Yeah. Okay, Lily, let's go. Yeah.
it like when you do a live interview? Are you ever like nervous or the questions are so basic it doesn't matter anyway? Mm, it's not bad. But what hard in golf is that they'll put the camera right here. When you're, after you hit a shot, they'll zoom in and they'll <laughs> literally be right. like right here. Yeah, so it's tough because you want to react, but you also don't want to look stupid. Oh, do you have to think about the cameras when you're playing golf? I, I try not to, but it's hard not to. They're right, right here. But What's yeah. up with this glove? I've never seen that glove before. It's a rain glove. So I grew up in Vancouver and it rained all the time. And I just got used to playing with a rain glove. I can't play with a normal glove anymore. No way. Yeah. No way. Rain glove. Yeah, it, I like it. Rain glove. Pro tip. <laughs> Never seen that. So can we do a little what's in the bag here? Sure. These are not... I would not have expected these. Why? Do you know these? Uh, well, so this is part of the... Uh, so TaylorMade has basically a series of clubs that are not only mm -hmm. Japanese, but women's. Is that true? Uh, they're like the honmas of right. tailor-made clubs. Yeah, let's just put it that way. You know, these, you would not see these in a pro shop in America. No, you would not. Where did you get them? Uh, from my rep in Singapore. In Singapore? Yeah. This is the Glore, is that how you say yeah, it? Yeah, M-Glore. M-Glore. Or M-Glory, is it? Yeah, because yeah. I saw it in Japan and it was Glory and it was, they okay. were gold and white okay. the driver was i hit the yeah. driver and i was like this is awesome and they're like that's for women oh, and i was like no i think it's for men it's for men also yes like these are these are at least so anyway there's a whole series mm -hmm. of clubs made and marketed that you don't see in america basically yeah which that's is great. i didn't even know about it until the share right yeah it's very cool and then really how do you like club. how do you like the uh, high toes i like them but as you can see it's time to switch this one. You got a little grind on the back. Yeah, definitely grinded it out. Is that um, It helps for... with the bounce, yeah. Yeah. So it makes it a little easier to get off off the ground. To open it up a little bit too? Yeah, yeah. just to get. I remember trying the high toes at first and I, yeah. I was like not a fan of the look mm -hmm. and, the, and like looking down on it. And then at the kingdom I hit like three shots and they were yeah. like, you cannot argue with these numbers. And I was like, you're right. Like the spin was like, 30% higher yeah. spin. Well, the thing is, so I've, I've always used TaylorMade growing up, so. Right. It's just pretty natural to me, I guess. M5, 10 and a half, I have the same head. Yeah, it's good. It sounds so good. Right? I mean, does it ever sound bad? Never. With TaylorMade? <laughs> Do you? Yeah, I mean, it's not like we work for a tailor, man, but... Oh. Yeah, I kind of. Yeah, we do. Do. <laughs> do you have, like, superstitions about changing the head out or anything like that? No, or not at all. You no. would just, you just, do you have, do you travel with a spare? No, a lot of people do, but I just assume if I really need it, one, they can always ship it to me. Right. Yeah. Oh, that is That's, great. Yeah. And what are these? Uh, speed sticks. It's speed like a training sticks. Yeah. Wait, let me see that. So what do you do? You just swing it really fast? Uh, yeah, so actually there's three. There's supposed to be three. I'm just lazy and you're supposed to swing. They're different weights. You're okay. supposed to swing them as fast as you can. There's different techniques to it. Basically, it's just trying to get your swing speed up. Right. Yeah. Because you can swing it faster than a normal. Right. Watch out, snowball. Yeah. <laughs> You can have the worst warm up and come out and shoot like 64. Justin Thomas said that yeah. uh, before his last win. He was yeah. like, I had the worst warm up ever. Yeah. And then I shot 10 under. Or sometimes something. you can have the perfect warm up and you go out on the course and it's like, where did it all go? Yeah. yeah. It's so interesting. I mean, yeah. that that is a very strange paradox. Um, I think sometimes it has to do with expectations. And, you know, when you're on the range, it's such a block practice mentality. You're hitting off towards one direction, one wind, there's no challenge to it, you right. know, visually. And then once you get out on the course, it's, it's just so different. Right. Yeah. Do you think Snowball is experiencing the AstroTurf as being very different? Do you know I that it's not real grass? It. <laughs> yeah. Hi. Hi. So in closing, uh, do you have a message out there to anyone perhaps that is inspired by you and and perhaps sees you in themselves as far as you know wanting to be in your shoes and play competitively and and experience success 
yeah i'm so honored i think you know if anyone is in that shoe i would say do it work hard have fun in life um just enjoy life enjoy life and and really see golf as like like why golf makes you happy and like why you want to do this and really envision your end goal because that's what i try to do every day or when i feel unmotivated just to you know just to find that passion within yourself and work hard but have fun at the same time and you know that's all i just be you yeah all right well thank you so much for uh thanks for having me yeah it's been fun